por la tierra seca que anhela el alivio, por el rey, el granjero, el sacerdote, el ladrón, por las flores que se esconden a pesar de... Soy agua, soy sequía, soy un respiro. When the heat was relentless and the sources were scarce, explorers tread on the El Camino Real in search of a new life. What they found was more precious than gold or silver. They found water, and for them, El Agua es Vida. The Camino Real really extended from, you know, really started in Mexico City. It was from capital to capital, Mexico City to Santa Fe, pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, other people say that you now the Camino Real, you know, continued and, and extended. And, and yes, I mean, it was this uh, this trading route. Yes, that it was like a, it was like the main vein, and then from there the arteries, you know, the you know would actually you know come out, and it basically connected along uh, main um, mining centers basically throughout Mexico. So it connected to, you know, to Durango and to Zacatecas, uh, Chihuahua, and then from products such as piñon nut to wool, uh, probably cattle, sheep, you know, things that were produced, and wine, religious artifacts, medicine, plants, also the intangible aspects of the Camino Real, such as music, you know, perhaps uh, traditions, Dances. I mean, we have the matachines that have transformed, yes, throughout the, the Camino. Legends, you know, all these wonderful things. Yes. So it was, this became this road, this trail, this route, um, this Camino, you know, that was very important for trade and uh, and the connection of families going back and forth. The El Camino Real, along with the goods and traditions brought explorers who eventually settled along the famous trading route. And as humans tend to do, they invented new ways to sustain their fellow men and the cattle that came along with them. Acequias were built to irrigate fields and grow crops for sustenance. Acequia Chamita was built by the Oñate colony. We know that for sure, Juan de Oñate and his colony, with the help of uh, some of the native Indians from the uh, San Juan Pueblo, which is now called Okeowing. It is one of the first to be built in this area for sure, and probably in, in the U.S. Like a family heirloom, the Acequia de Chamita has been passed down from generation to generation in the Trujillo household. Mr. Fidel believes that his family members had been living in this area since the late 1500s, which make it a possibility for them to be involved in the initial building of Acequia de Chamita. Even though in today's day and age, the people in the community are responsible for cleaning just their own front, Mr. Fidel remembers a time when he was 15, he would participate in the Olympia of the Acequias with his family members. In a way, the acequia and the traditions attached to it have all grown to change, and Mr. Fidel has experienced that shift firsthand. Strolling down the Rio Shama, he reminisces days of his boyhood. This is where we used to uh, swim. And, uh, I think on that one out there. I remember my brother, who was much older than me and much more brave than me, he used to jump from that on top of that thing into the water. We always had two or three acres of chili. Oh. <laughs> and that's a lot of work. And uh, you sell some of the chili green, fresh, you know, and then uh, you let some of it grow red, so it's red. Okay. And, and then you pick all the red one and you make it in what's called, called ristras. Okay. You know, the ones you the see one on the gate. And at one time, I remember my dad on the side of the house had about 200 of those hanging up. Mr. Fidel is the true embodiment of a person who believes in the power of an Isekia community. While the water sustains his crops, his health and his livelihood, people like Mr. Fidel continue to nurture and cherish the sweet memories that bloom around the Isekia di Chamita 
or as he calls it home <laughs>